How to buy Electrify America stock. Most knowledgeable investors are aware of the fact that collectibles have always been a good hedge against inflation and have proven to be a sound investment with regard to capital gain. When they think of collectibles the usual antique stamps, coins, art etc. readily come to mind. However very few think of militaria. What is militaria? It's not even in my Webster so I'll define it myself. Basically it is any type of military or paramilitary collectible. This can range from weapons, uniforms, medals, badges, insignia, field gear, etc. If it's of military origin and people collect it, it's militaria. Even before the shooting had stopped in Europe, GIs were liberating souvenirs from German prisoners and off the battlefields. Before long a brisk trade developed between the soldiers as they swapped items back and forth not really knowing what they had or what they were doing and basing their trades on an item's purely personal appeal. For quite a few years after the war these souvenirs were sought by a few hardcore collectors. They appreciated the historical significance and the artistic qualities of the relics. Yes a Nazi officer's full dress uniform can be a magnificent looking thing. It was in the 1960s that the hobby really took off. What contributed most to its gaining popularity was that it was during this time that reference material started becoming available. Before then there was very little information available to the collectors. Reference books meant that a piece could be identified as to exactly what it was. The old German jacket was now a Panzer Captain's Parade tunic and the swastika pin was now an NSDAP membership pin in gold. Now that collectors had some idea what they really had they were able to start putting realistic values on their items. No longer would someone trade an Iron Cross second class for a rare army general's dress dagger. The hobby was becoming organized. By the 1960s there were quite a few dealers who bought and sold German military either on a part-time or in some cases a full-time basis. Interest was increasing as more and more people realized what a fascinating hobby it was. As interest grew demand grew and as demand grew prices grew. There was a steady rise in prices for the next 30 years. Unfortunately as the values of the collectibles have risen so have the number and quality of the fakes or reproduction items. Spending big bucks on one of these as an investment could prove to be disastrous. Be careful. Here are some suggestions for an investor with limited knowledge of our hobby. Buy quality. Don't buy pieces that are in poor condition. And don't buy low grade pieces. It would be better to buy one really fine item than a bunch of junk. Make your purchase through a reputable dealer. This will require some homework on your part but it will pay off in the long run. The internet is full of dealers some good and some not so good. Check them out before dealing with them. Auctions are a good source for military however I've noticed that the giant auction everyone knows is full of fakes and junk. Another place to find dealers is at military shows and gun shows. Again be careful who you deal with. You might want to get an experienced collector to act as an advisor. Make sure it's someone who does not have a financial interest in your possible purchase. Be prepared to hold your investment for a while. Don't expect to buy it one day and sell it the next for a profit. This article was written to acquaint potential investors and collectors with the hobby of German military collecting. The author does no believe in or support the ideals represented by these collectibles. Bob Trient has been involved in military for over 35 years as a collector dealer publisher and author. He had written numerous articles on the different aspects of military collecting info germanmilitarycollectibles.com.